in the previous episode, you watched the first steps to be taken in this project. The restoration and conservation of this portrait of the French Marshal Saint Arnaud. I would like to remind you that I will leave the links to the several videos of this project by order of publishing here below in the description of this video. So please check it. In this episode, I will continue the process of stabilizing the structure of this painting because, in fact, it is a canvas that is in a very bad condition. And after removing it from the stretching frame, cleaning and removing the old patches, it is necessary to clean the backside of the canvas well so that can later receive the new patches that I'm going to apply. With the help of a scalpel, I will have to scrap off this old glue residue, which is apparently rabbit skin glue, a glue often used for many situations, but especially used as adhesive for small patches on the canvas. The scalpel is suitable for this situation, although I have to be very careful with the pressure that I do apply. I definitely don't want to damage the canvas more than it already is. Finally, the back of the canvas is clean and the holes and tears are clearly visible. I can therefore move on to refilling the gaps on the canvas. I will use different techniques to close these flaws again. Initially, I will use pieces of canvas with a type of grain as similar as possible to the grain of the original canvas and placing it under the canvas, I can take a mold with the exact shape of the holes of larger dimensions. I try to be as cautious as possible and I try to catch all the details of the outer edge of the hole so that the new patch can fit perfectly to the corresponding hole. This method allows so there is no excess canvas material from the patch that could be noticed in the future as a small relief in the original painting. With this technique, this is a void, therefore achieving a more perfect finish. This is a process that I have to repeat for all larger holes. When I finally have all the patches, I can cut them, as they are made according to the mold, each one fits with some pressure and to keep them in the same position, I will now use some acid-free tape and this tape will keep the patches in the place. Later, I'm going to glue some Japanese paper washi kozo with a reversible adhesive in the back of the canvas and that's going to keep those bigger patches in the place so they will not move. Washikozo is a paper made in Japan with vegetable fibers and with an extraordinary resistance. To fix this big tear I'm going to use a technique called bridging. The bridging technique consists of joining together both sides of the tear with very small canvas threads that are glued together with an adhesive. Each one of those threads is not so resistant, but together they really form a strong union and they are very, very resistant. So that is why for this kind of situation, this is one of my favorite methods. 
I always get very good results. To protect the painting, I put some mylar film under it and then I can apply the adhesive. I apply it to the entire length of the seam that I'm going to make and then very patiently I put the canvas threads one by one. And if you are still watching this video till now, click the like button so I can spread this video to more people. Thank you. It's this perpendicular way of applying them that gives the strength to this union. And because it is formed by many threads together, it turns out to be a very reliable way to join again this tear. When the structural damages in the canvas are fixed, I can pass to the application of the new canvas. This technique that I will perform now is called lining and it consists in the application of a new canvas to a painting that is not in a good condition or damaged as is the case. Basically, the canvas of the original painting will be glued on a new and more resistant canvas. This does not only give a new resistance to the painting that is being restored, as well after it will enable the canvas to be properly stretched. Otherwise, I would be at the risk that when I apply traction to the fragile painting, it could easily tear again. This is how I have the guarantee that it's properly protected and with the necessary resistance. I mark now on the new canvas guiding lines that will help me in the application of the adhesive that I will use to glue the canvas. In this situation, the adhesive that I will use is a fully reversible synthetic adhesive, that is, if in the future my work needs to be undone to perform another type of restoration, for example, with this adhesive it can be easily done. I dissolve this adhesive in a solvent and it is necessary to apply it at a certain temperature. After it will dry, which may take some few days. I apply this adhesive on both the canvas and the back of the original painting and after, this adhesive can finally be reactivated with heat and pressure. The impregnation of adhesive on the original canvas must be generous and in a good quantity. From that depends the very good adhesion to the new canvas. But now that I apply the adhesive, I can also check the incredible amount of interventions I had to perform. Together again, all the holes and tears that did exist. But I'm very satisfied. I can foresee that the final result will be much better than the initial painting that did arrive to me. Well, that is not so very difficult, right? Time did pass and the adhesive solution dried well. Now I can move on to the lining. I'm going to make small marks with gentle heat just to fix the canvas in a few spots so it stays in the same position when I'm applying heat because the heat must be applied from behind. 
My table is protected with mylar film to prevent any risk of the paint sticking to the table. And underneath I also have a thick felt layer. Maybe you haven't noticed it yet, but the epaulets of this military uniform are painted with thicker paint, a technique called impasto. If I didn't provide this felt when I was exerting pressure on the canvas, that impasto would eventually become flat due to the action of the heat and the pressure. Thus, I have the guarantee now that this impasto will be preserved. Remember that you can always find all the links to the different episodes of this project that have been launched here down in the description of this video. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, subscribe now and activate the notifications bell to be notified when I launch a new video. If you have not seen the first part of this project, click in this video. If you would like to watch another video, then click here. Thank you for watching and we'll meet on the next video.